So my name is Ryan Rossi. I am the event supervisor for Water Bottle Rockets. Um, I've been doing this since I was in third grade. I was back in it way back. I'm 27 now and a teacher and a, and a coach. So I've been doing this for a long time and uh, I keep coming back every year because uh, it's pretty fun for the kids. Um, next thing during this quick little rules thing, if you hear my dog bark, I apologize. it's one of the downfalls of being at home is loud dogs. German Shepherd making a lot of noise up there. <laughs> but um, so hopefully he doesn't interrupt us too bad. But uh, if you do hear that, I'll, I'll try to talk louder and stuff. But uh, um, but first thing, I want to get this one out of the way because it's the biggest one every year. Um, this is an event for the kids by the kids. Um, we can all with our skills as adults, you know, we can put together a nice rocket and shoot it up and see how far it goes. But that's not really what it's about. Um, in this event, you'll see like the kids get sometimes even more excited when a rocket goes straight up and comes straight down and crashes than they do if it's actually successful. So um, number one is let the kids be kids. You'll be amazed what they come up with and uh, let them, you know, do it themselves because that's what that's what we're, it's all about. That's what we're here. We're here for. So definitely want to make sure that um, your job is to guide them not do it for them or come up with the idea. So if they have some crazy idea, they want to do, you know, something with a balloon and make the nose cone pop up, all that, your job is to help them execute it, not do that for them. Um, and we see that every year. We see kids come up and they'll be like, I'll say, oh, how'd you come up with this idea? And they'll, they're kids. They don't know how to lie. They say, well, my dad did it. So um, keep that in mind as well, that we want the kids to do it for the kids. Um, um, are you guys hearing that feedback yeah, there? Yeah. yeah, I'll fix that. Yeah, all right. We got them now. All right, sounds perfect. Thank you. So, again, just let the kids be kids. Um, they'll come up with some great ideas. Some of them will work, some of them won't. Your job <laughs> is to uh, help them execute it. All right, next, uh, we'll just go through the rules real quick here. And usually for this, I like to just answer more questions because we all can have the rules in front of us and read off a piece of paper. So I'll highlight the important ones. Um, and then if you guys have any questions after, we'll, uh, we'll get that going. So first, um, everything has to be um, built by the kids. And that means you can't go out and buy like a model rocket set and say, like, here's a nose cone off a model rocket set, or here's a parachute off a model rocket set. That would be considered buying rocket parts um, that would make it not okay to use. Um, so you can make nose cones, you can make wings, you can make parachutes all out of other materials, but you can't go out to the store and buy a model rocket set and put it on, put it on the rocket and say, we built this. Um, that's not, that's not uh, the point of it. So we want to make sure that we're not doing that. Um, you can't use anything from last year. Um, and that's why we have, um, if you look at rule number three, the rocket must be green. Uh, that changes every year. So um, that's so we don't use the same rockets from last year. So yes, it has to be green. That pops up every year um, because it tells us that this wasn't the same rocket from last year. Um, you can add anything to the rocket part. Um, the only thing you can't do is damage the part of the rocket that ha that holds the, the air pressure and the water. If you do that, it won't be able to launch on launch day. Um, so you can build on top of that original two liter bottle. Uh, we see uh, teams, you know, they cut like the middle section off of the other parts of the bottle and they add it to the top. Um, all of that stuff is absolutely OK. You can attach wings to it. You just can't damage that actual um, part of the bottle that holds the uh, the water in the air. Otherwise, it won't launch. Um, so everything else is okay. That's where the freedom comes in. Um, we've seen rockets with wings, without wings, with 10 wings, with two wings. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen it all. So you really have a lot of freedom there um, to do as long as you don't damage that original bottle that holds the, the air. Um, next, we have... Um, you can add parachutes, nose cones, anything like that to help the time in the air. So, again, it's not just taking a two-liter bottle, you put a cone on, you can do that. Um, it's just you can do all those other things to help you be successful as long as you don't damage that part of the rocket. Um, 
The only metal allowed on the rocket are like snap swivels for fishing lines. We see those and that is allowed, but the rest of it um, can't be sharp, can't be pointy, can't be glass, can't be metal. That's just a safety thing. And we want to make sure everything is, everything is good there. Um, nose tip radius. Uh, that rule there is all about... Um, it can't be... It cannot be pointed because safety. Um, I've actually been hit with a rocket that came up straight down. It was not pointy, and it still hurt pretty bad. But... Um, so we want to make sure that we're being safe when you guys are practicing and at the competition on that day. We don't want anybody getting hurt or injured. Um, so make sure that the rocket is not coming to a point. Um, rule number seven, everybody take a look. At, if you have the sheets in front of you, I know it's up on the screen there. This one is something that happens every single year. Um, the rocket has to be able to fit on our launcher. And how our launcher looks, it has a a square metal piece where the rocket is held in. So that rule is so the rocket fits on the launch pad. So um, it must be five centimeters, two inches above the bottle opening. So even if you have wings, the bottom of the wings cannot go down across that line. Because if they do, we won't be able to fit it on our launcher and the kids will have to make adjustments that day. Um, and we want it just to go smoothly. So we put that there so you guys can make sure that uh, the rocket can fit. Um, we provide all the water and air, so you guys don't have to bring any of that. Um, so if, when you're planning to practice, only plain tap water, um, all that. But on the launch day and at the events, all of that will be, um, all of that will be provided. So you guys don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, nine parts of the rocket may separate during flight, but they must remain attached together by a string or lanyard. So this means that um say you have a nose cone and you launch your rocket that nose cone still has to be attached to the rest of the rocket if it comes off um during the flight of the rocket um it's, it will drop down to the lower bracket and then the time will actually stop when that piece hits the ground so the entire rocket has to be connected together but they can separate so if you're putting a parachute inside a nose cone um, and you want that nose cone to fall off, it has to be attached all together. And then the competition, um, you know, it's pretty pretty straightforward rules there. I'm not going to read them all for you guys, but if you, it, the competition pretty much works. Everything that you bring, um, bring a toolkit, bring stuff that might have to be fixed that day. Um, you're going to, what's going to happen is you walk in, you check in, and from then on, it's just the kids. So the kids are going to be on their own. You guys will have to stay behind the check-in table. We'll have the water, all the stuff there, um, and they go. We do two launches on a um, two separate rocket launchers, and um, yep. They, however high um, the highest time, so when it uh, leaves the launch pad and then hits the ground, that is how uh, we judge it. So the one that's in the air the longest, and that's where if it breaks apart, it drops into the bottom bracket. And then the time also stops when the uh, something hits the ground. Um, we have timers. We take uh, the average time of uh, three uh, timers. Usually they're right in the uh, same zone. So we take the average time between the three timers. And that is pretty much it. Um, we don't see a lot of ties because the timing is pretty, uh, pretty accurate. And then... Um, so pretty much it. If it hits something in the air, the time stops there. Um, yeah, so again, those are the rules. You guys have them. Now, it is a very creative event, right? Um, we have these guidelines and rules, but we have seen hundreds of different ideas over the years um, and what is what works and what doesn't. My tips for you guys are to build it sturdy right you don't want to have pieces of paper for wings because if it's a windy day it's not gonna go very well if you know your nose cone you want to have some weight in it like those kind of things um because we launch in any weather as long as there's no lightning um so it could be a it could be a uh a 75 mile an hour windy day out there we've had windy days before. so um i my 
best thing is make it scary and uh, have fun with it. Let the kids have fun because they'll come up with some crazy ideas and it's a good time. Um, so those are the rules. And um, really the number one is let the kids, let the kids do it. So, um, but I usually, we, in the past when this event's been in person, um, most of our time is spent answering questions. So I wanted to, you know, just kind of go through those rules pretty quickly and then give you guys the opportunity to ask questions. So um, if you have a question, you can just unmute yourself and ask and I will answer them. So. Hey Ryan, if I jump in real quick, uh, we normally try to do a couple open sessions. Mm -hmm. Uh, weather permitting so we can forecast them too far ahead because by the time we start practice in late March, early April, it literally ends up being, you know, week out to five days out when we see a good weather on Saturday in the morning or afternoon or whatever. We sent an email out to the head coaches. And generally speaking, not everybody is ready. So we don't have a big turnout. From my perspective, if you can't practice, this you're not going to do well so i like to see everybody out you know when we do the open session and i think biggest hurdle is for me to send out a direct email to the event coaches so whoever wants to come to the practice sessions please throw your uh, email in the chat so I'll collect all those emails, and when I set up a practice session, you will get a direct email from Macomb Science Olympiad, rather than Macomb Science Olympiad, send something to the head coach and then it not get to you in time. Back to you, Ryan. Yep, so, um, yeah, and uh, about practicing too, um, the one thing that I always get asked every year is, how do you practice this event? Um, this event, is, it is a tougher one to practice, but a lot of your schools might actually already have a water bottle rocket launcher. I know when I was in it as a kid, it was literally just a bike pump and a couple two by fours and a locking mechanism, but uh, they can also be bought at, uh, I think last year there was one on Amazon that a few, um, few, uh, few coaches had bought. Um, so those are available through, um, you know, third party sites, but they are, there's a lot of different ones. Um, but your school may very well have one from past years, so definitely make sure you ask about that because they um, that would be a good thing to do is definitely practice it and figure out what works and what doesn't. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to open the floor up to any questions on that because I know there's a lot outside of the rules that people like to ask, and that's really what uh, I wanted this time to be for. So, again, if you have any questions, you can just unmute yourself and I will answer. So I have a question. Where did you find the rules? I apologize. I, I somehow don't have them. They are on the Science Olympiad website. MacombSO.org. And then if you go to the elementary section. Hold on. Gonna, Julia's going to help you. Here. I just dropped the link in the chat. Thank oh, you, you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I do have this. Yes. How do you get to this? Sorry about that. I did have this. I, <laughs> okay. I, for some reason, I didn't. I couldn't find them in here. I apologize. I'm so sorry. No problem. Is there a minimum or a maximum height that it can be? Oh, uh, just, nope. Any height. Okay, so. You know what? We didn't find the rule. <laughs> yep, they can be um, they can be any height. Um, so that is part of like the trial and error type deal because this event is really about um, you know, how heavy your rocket is, how much water you're gonna put in it compared to the air. Um, so we've seen rockets that have been five feet tall. We've seen rockets that have literally just been a two liter bottle with a nose cone on top and. We've seen quite a different, uh, quite different designs with that, and both of them have had success and both have had failure. So um, there is no height requirement, um, and it's all about finding that like happy zone between, you know, how heavy is it, how much water you put in, it, how much air you put in it. In. 
um, well, not how much air, but how much water versus the 75 pounds of uh, pressure. So, all right, somebody raised their hand. Mario. Yes, um, just want to know, you mentioned the parachutes. Um, if they're not from an actual model rocket, but from another toy, you know, those ones that are already pre-attached to a soldier thing, I mean, would that be allowable if it's not from a rocket kit? How, how um, is that, like, drawn? We try to... Line? We try to stay away from any commercially made rocket components. So you can use different things um, that are as long as they're not from like a model rocket or a parachute. Um, say you have a pair like a parachute from another product, we would we would consider that part of a model rocket. Um, what I mean by like the parachute, we want to see the kids make them. So we see okay. like you know the big painters um, tarps that are the plastic ones that you put down. We see kids use that. We see trash bags. We see um, all sorts of different things like that where something is being repurposed to make it we just want any like parachute that you can go buy we would stay away from um we wouldn't we wouldn't want that because that would that, that would kind of if you, so for example a little army guy with a um parachute since it is a yeah. parachute that you are buying that would be no um gotcha. but but anything else that is being repurposed garbage bags the painters tarps um we've even seen um We've seen all sorts of different things as long as they are not bought parachutes. Okay. So now the um, the actual the actual like is there allowed any other type of mini um, propulsion or detachment device to allow the parachute to separate? Um, no. there is there is things that you can do um, that okay. allow the parachute to come out as far as like up there. There's no other things you can do to make the rocket go higher as far as like different propulsion. But no, I'm just seen... talking about yeah, the detachment or deployment of the parachute can be another type of mechanism, we... I should say. Um, yeah, there's things you can do. Um, it just all depends if they're within the rules. So for example, we've seen some teams try, um, balloons, they put balloons in the nose cone that help deploy it. We've seen teams, um, weight the nose cone where it falls off easier and then have we've seen teams put um, baby powder in the nose cone because it helps the parachute slide out like all those things would be be allowed so you can do things to try to help get the parachute to come out yes all right not That's using like a deployment device though um as long as there's no metal okay so they, it's not something that you're really going to have you know, there's not going to be electricity in it, no metal, so you're very much limited. But it, again, that's part of the freedom. If you can, if you, if the kids come up with something within those rules of, you know, you're not having any, um, we've seen rubber bands before try to help propel the uh, the parachute out of there. So um, there is things you can do as long as they are within those rules um, that is allowed. Question on attaching, I'm sorry. No, I was just wanted to say the rules on that Macomb URL has the more detailed <clears throat> rules, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep, and it will give you. It gives you. When I was saying like number nine, number seven, it goes through each of the um, construction rules. So all the things you can have and all the things you can't have. I highlighted the main ones because when you everybody, we can all we can all read them um, as well. So I didn't want to just read through word for word, but. Um, as long as they're within those rules so if if you come up with something that can help that parachute come out that is not metal that is not um sharp that follows those rules of the of what's allowed and what's not then you are good to go All right, um, as far go. as it attaching to the press pressure vessel like any glues that would damage it that we shouldn't be using or anything like that no um all glue pretty much is okay um it's just when uh, there's been times we want to uh, like we you can use hot glue, but if you keep hot glue like on the rocket forever, you're gonna damage that. Uh, yeah, when you're, like, put, it's just how you apply it, but you'll notice right away if you damage it. You can use hot glue, um, but again, if you hold it there for five six minutes and it's hot, it's gonna eventually damage that rocket. But if you just put a dab here, dab there, and use it, there shouldn't there won't be any damage there. But yep, any glue is good. Um, liquid nails is always a popular one. Um, so from just from the hardware store, liquid nails is usually one that uh, it takes a little bit longer to dry, but we've seen a lot of teams use that before as well. All right, we got two people with their hands up. Jason, what you got for me? 
So I think I think I know the answer to this, but just in case, um, I saw the examples for altering the bottle. Um, can you? Is it okay to degree, decrease the volume? It mentioned increase. Is it okay to decrease the volume by crushing it? Like if you have like rubber bands around it or something to kind of keep stuff together, or is that uh, against the rule? Um, it, it would depend where it's at. If it's in that main pressure bottle, you can't really do anything to that at all because as okay. soon as that air goes in, it's going to actually expand. Like you'll see, like okay, anything yeah. like you would crush, the air would just push it right back out. Gotcha. But, you don't it does not you if it's to like say you build on to the rocket and you wanted to change maybe the aerodynamics in some way of like the top part of the rocket right. you can do that you just can't um that bottom pressure bend bottom. vessel that original two liter bottle cannot be changed okay gotcha and another question about the dimensions you mentioned the five centimeter rule about um kind of the plane of the five centimeter does that plane go out to infinity or can you have fins that kind of come out and then come down like away from the uh or does um, the, Manish the had the picture of the launcher um I think if you want to throw that back up yeah I'll throw that back on because that launch. that rule is mostly about the launcher so if you see our launcher is really on a um so if you look at the picture that it's like that okay. so that you can to in an extent uh, as yeah. long as it fits on the rocket so on okay. uh, the launcher but if it, if you come that day it's hard because you can't you only get the price on our launcher on the open yeah. days but um that box is that five centimeter rule so you see we see that uh that's probably the most common construction problem that we have on the event day is having something that does not fit on the launcher because of that five centimeter rule okay okay so yeah but i guess you can you can still theoretically have some stuff that comes down farther but farther yeah. out it has to be away from that yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That, this this picture would actually be helpful. Is it? Is this something that's available? Just this slide. I would. I wouldn't mind getting a copy of this. Um. Just to have something as an example. Yeah. We'll we'll be posting this video on awesome. the oh, on the okay. website within a couple of days. So this will be part of the video. Okay. And so one yeah. one final one final question. Um. It's more about the events themselves. Um. You mentioned the open sessions being like in late March and in april i know that there the main tournament is in may and this is this is brand new to me and we have some local tournaments in like march is that uh, does these th these events will be even at the local tournaments correct is that correct it's they're all this or is this That's only correct. okay okay i just want to make sure this isn't only run in the, may it's also the, the, the only thing the only thing at the local tournament is sometimes in middle of the march it is too cold ah. and we have to cancel Gotcha. gotcha. Right, because the ice ice forms on the machine and machine doesn't work proper and all those. So Okay. And a tournament next, you <laughs> and a tournament you get two launches, right? So okay. because it's tournament, we can afford to, you know, give you free practice time. But if you come to the practice sessions, yeah. you know, you can come launch five, six, seven and figure out, hey, this thing's not working. Can we quickly modify something and try it again? I have seen some kids launch 30 times in a day, right? Yeah. When they come to the practice. So that's the advantage of practice. Okay. All right, great. Thanks. Ron, Ron's had his hand up for a while. What you got, Ron? Uh, just two questions. Um, so we got two chances. Can we actually do two different rockets or does it have to be one rocket, two you, you can chances. definitely have two different rockets. We've seen, we actually recommend two different rockets because say that first one comes up and it breaks or say that first one goes up and it gets stuck on top of, in a tree. Um, so I would definitely recommend two rockets. Um, what we usually see is usually the teams are three kids. Um, three kids each make a rocket and then you uh, decide out of those three rockets which one would be the best one for the uh for the tournament so i know when i was in as a kid that was what our practice was for we all each kid came up with a different design um we built all three rockets and then we practiced it and then the top ones were the ones that we used on the launch day and then say we had a and but that just because you bring two doesn't mean you have to use both you can have one that goes up for two minutes lands nice and gently down and you want to use it again for your second launch you can do that too you get two launches and you have that freedom to have, uh, we've seen teams bring four or five rockets to practice, and they don't decide until they get there which one they're going to use. 
Um, but that's definitely, I would recommend two at the minimum because of, you know, if it does break, you want to have something that you can launch for that second one. You want to at least um, have a backup one. <clears throat> exactly, exactly. And then um, one thing that we uh, we do also do, um, we are there and we have usually towards the end. Um, we've had some downtime in the past years where, say, there is a team that has three Rockets. We, we would launch all three, but only the two that you did earlier would count. So we, we're, we're there for the kids, right? So if you pick, if you three and that kid just wants to see his rocket go up, we'll do that. It won't count to your time. But uh, at the end of the day, before um, we pack it all up, we always let coaches know that if there's you have three rockets and that kid, you know, is upset that they didn't get to shoot theirs off, it won't count. But we can always do that uh, for you guys because it is for the kids, right? Yeah. Uh, second question real quick is um, we're talking about cannibalizing pieces. Um, one of the kids the other day actually brought up, hey, can I use like a funnel for the nose cone? Um, that's actually a whole piece. Can you use whole pieces of things that aren't yes. rocketry related? Yep. Or, or, okay. That would be a perfect example of something that we see actually quite a bit. Um, we see the soccer cones. We see uh, funnels. We see a ton of different things. Um, you know, we see pieces of other two liter bottles, like the top being put on as a nose cone. So all of those things are okay. As long as they're not like, you can go buy something and use it as your nose cone. It just can't be a nose cone, uh, related rocket piece. Cool. So Thank you. That's all I got. Anything, sure. anything like that is good. All right. Uh, Nicole. Hi. Um, so the base has to be green, but can they decorate it at all? Um, if you take uh, on rule number th two, um, yeah. we have had rockets that are decorated, um, especially on the wings. That's usually something that's pretty popular. The only thing that you must have is your school name, team number, and the year on the rocket with a permanent marker. So outside of that, as long as it's green, um, that's cool with us. We see designs all the time, especially on like the wings and on the nose cones. We see quite a bit. So all that's cool too. Um, just make sure you have the name, team number, and the year on it too. All right, who else we got here? All right, I can't see Alex. I'm on my phone. Minish, who's else? Uh, Mike, uh, Michael Hansen has the next question. All right. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, I just have a quick question about the amount of water. Is there a minimum or maximum amount of water that they're going to be allowed to use? Nope, that's the trial and error part. So that okay. is, that is, uh, the, we, no matter what, there will be 75 pounds of air pressure. So you will find as you are practicing and as you are um, trying to figure out what works best is some levels of water uh, will make it too heavy. Some lever, well, some levels of water won't give it enough propulsion. So you have to kind of find that sweet spot about how much your rocket weighs compared to um, how much water you're going to put in it. But that's really what the, that's what the, getting the height from the rocket comes down to um, is, is are, do you have the right amount of water for the weight and the air pressure? Um, so we've seen teams, and sometimes teams walk up, and I look at them like, we are getting drenched today because it's filled up to the very top with water. And then sometimes you see teams come up, and um, you see that it might not have enough to get very high up in the air. So it's all about finding that uh, every rocket's different, finding that middle ground between um, – the weight and propulsion so cool thank you uh there's a there's a on uh, question in the chat session uh does each kid have does each kid on the team launch twice or is it two launches per team two launches per team two launches per team we have two two launchers so it uh they'll come up it doesn't matter which one you launch on first because every team launches on both rockets uh both launchers and uh they can do they some teams bring them both up at the same time and we'll get them done right away um some teams want to take the time but it's two launches per team uh mario has a question mario you are next i think you're muted mario yes as far as the time or the two launches are those cumulative just so i'm clear the time of the no each launch is different your best so time say, 
yep, so your best time will be the one that goes in. So say you go up on your first launch and say a wing falls off and you get 10 seconds, but your wing fell off, so you're in the bottom bracket because it didn't stay together. That second launch has nothing to do with the first launch. So, okay, it's, so it's, it's the best, a, the best of two. Best of two. So if that first one goes horrible, you have you have that second one, and then say your first one did great. There's not as much pressure uh, for that second one. So yeah, right. two launches completely separate from one another. Okay, and just one other question. I was supplied by my school with a launcher, so as long as we meet that two inch minimum for the fins wings. Um, because it looks slightly different than what the pictures you guys posted. Yep. Um, but I should be okay. I mean, is that should I send in a picture to somebody to see if I'm as doing long, everything properly? As long as you're doing the the five centimeters from the bottom, the two inch from the bottom, uh, you will be fine on our launcher. So it, it, if it fits on both for your practice one, uh, okay. you can, but just make sure for that launch day um uh, at the events uh you will you have that two inch gap so um launchers might be different but uh for for ours it has to have that two inch zone got it so if you do that and it works on yours you're set very good i'm 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 gonna jump in real quick on this because i'm hearing a lot of questions on uh people wanting the fins to go below so i want everybody to try to think what's the purpose of the fins and how would they help you? I think if you go any lower than what's recommended, in my view, it's really not going to help you. Let's put it that way. So, yep. But it's also on the, on the flip side of it. If a kid wants to do it a certain way, give it a try as long as yep, it fits in the launcher. Yep. So um, you you never know. I've seen rockets that have come up where I've, I, you know, I've seen millions of different ones and I just say, I already had it in my mind if it's going to be, you know, successful or not. It's so, a lot of times I get surprised too. So, um, it all depends again, execute what the kids want. And then, um, if it goes well in practice, then roll with it. If it doesn't, um, help them figure out what could be better. Right. So trying to stay away from telling you what to do and what not to do. Cause let those kids, um figure it out because that's your job is to help those kids um because again this isn't an event that you're going to study for for you know four hours a week like a's for anatomy or other events uh, this is an event where it's we're outside we're having a good time and uh we're shooting rockets off in the air and it's about having fun and seeing what those kids can come up with uh that will work so um any idea can work as long as they're within those rules so i definitely i uh, encourage you to encourage your kids to explore that. All right. Who's else has got their hand up? Nicole, Nicole has a question. Okay. Nicole, unmute yourself, please. I've already gone. You answered my question. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, sure. Julia. Okay. Um, actually, Julia is my daughter, but I have, I just didn't know, this is my first time doing this and I guess I don't have very much information. I, I wanted to know when does it start and like when do the kids meet and where do we get the kit? So kids can meet start anytime, right? I mean, the way I, when I coached, what worked for me was getting the kids to work together, right? How to fill the bottle. How, even if you have a prototype, right, you can practice inside. Who's going to fill the water? What happens if the water is spilled and gets into the parachute, right? So all those things you can still practice. The building part, the practice part, you can do it at home. And then once you are sure of things and weather gets a little better, you can go out and shoot the rockets. And and I don't and I don't believe. No. Um, do we have a kit, Manish? I don't believe we do. There do are we? no kits. Basically, no kit, this is no kits for this one. Yeah, this is build yourself. Okay. All you need is some ideas. You know, if you're going to have parachute, you need some material for parachute. You know, you possibly need some sort of a string to attach the parachute to the bottle. You need a couple of at least a couple two liter Coke bottles or Pepsi bottles or whatever works for you. Uh, some tape, some glue, 
you know, how are you going to attach the parachute? So you may need something for that. You know, are you going to use some sort of a device at the top? So once and, you start thinking, you can come and, up with materials. And to me, the more you try, the more kids are going to learn. And I would say that um, that's where every session, every year should start with have the rules printed out have and start making a list of the things that you want to do and start having the kids come up with what they want to do like how would they want to execute this and, and analyzing those rules um that's where the year should start off is um making a list brainstorming what you want it to look like and um the pieces so then you can get the pieces together and then you can start building but definitely start with that list of what you want to do and what you want to make Okay, thank you for your help. Um, so will we be getting emails of like when they're supposed to meet or anything like that, or they just meet on their own? No, they just you are you are on your own. Basically, your head coach will tell you who your partner is, and then you sort out between you and your partner as to what time works for you. How do coaches? I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Nothing. Think Jamie has a question. Hi. Hello. You can hear me okay? Okay. So um, I joined in a few minutes later. I apologize, but I I, I heard you mention because in my notes it says you only can use green bottles, but you just mentioned um, Pepsi or Coke bottles. I just wanted to make sure that any two liter bottle works. Yeah, well, any it's got to be any green two liter bottle works. So, so would Mountain Dew work? <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, okay, it's totally just... up to you, as long as it's a green color. So okay. the part that holds water has to be green. You can use clear for other parts, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then my next question is for the launch pad. Do do the kids have to build that, or are the um, coaches able to build that for the kids? Um, the school, your school might have one, so I would check with the school uh, um, first. I, yeah. Oh, sorry, that, we did, we did, and they said okay. that we had to build our own. Well, um, you, instead of building them, they, you can buy them from, like, uh, I've seen them on Amazon before. Um, I've okay. seen them in other places as well. The only thing, like, for example, when I did this, and I think other coaches who have done this before can kind of say the same, um, they're not terribly difficult to build. Um, you can find directions online and stuff like that. Um, but also in the past couple of years, we've had coaches that have just bought them right online. Um wow. When I was when I was in it, ours was literally a couple two by fours, um, and like a a pin that we had tied to a string that we pulled that we pumped up with a bicycle pump. So wow. there is, um, you can find all stuff online about that, but I would recommend just finding one to buy, um, for water bottle rockets. Um, I don't there there's many different ones that you can get. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. And you don't need you don't need to bring that for the tournament. Come tournament or practice tournament. Yep. We'll have our professional launchers that we use that are tied to the scuba tank. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? With any one one more call. Anybody who hasn't put their email in the chat session wants to be invited for practice sessions come uh, March, April, uh, throw your names in the chat session. I think quite a few people did, but few people who joined late. Matt has a question. Yeah, I see you got no glass allowed. Is fiberglass considered glass? Can we use fiberglass? Like making a nose cone possibly? As long as it's not to a point, I would say that that is okay because the the glass there is for shattering. So as long as it's not shattering or able to be shattered, um, that would be okay. So depending on how you did it, I guess as long as it was rounded, it didn't have um, didn't falls into that those rules of. Rules of uh, 
what you can and can't do. That was a tough one. That's I, I haven't seen fiberglass over the years. So might be something worth exploring as long as it's in follows those rules of um, not sharp, um, no metal, and, and the glass is, is no shattering for safety reasons. So um, I would say that is okay, depending on uh, where you put it. Um, if you're using it as a wing, just make sure you follow the, those rules are followed. Um, but nose comb, same same rules there. Um, All right. Yep. There is a there is an online question. Uh, is there a difference between Team A and Team B? As far as participating, there is no difference. As far as build, there is no difference. But Team B is competing in a different bracket, right? So as far as awards are concerned, you are not competing with Team A's. Team B is like a second team. So but as far as team. launching, as far as making rockets, uh, as far as the competition is concerned, everything is identical to you. So in a final situation, though, Team A would not face off with the best of Team B? Like the no. Happen. OK. Anybody? The only thing I wanted to add was also that you mentioned the Coke bottle, two liters. I think that threw everybody off because, or at least the one yeah. bottle that I have has a silhouette to it, right? And it's different just before the opening. So have you guys used Coke two liter bottles in the past? Yep. Yeah, when there were clear bottles, yes. So okay, the Coke's version of, uh, I think it's Sprite. Yeah, isn't Sprite. Which is a clean uh, bottle. Uh, it, so if, if you think that's more aerodynamic or <laughs> works better, then absolutely use use the Sprite bottles. Yep, those are okay too. Yep. Okay. I meant to say Coke products. I should have. Yeah. I should not have said Coke bottles. I should have said Coke pro Coke products. So green bottles, as long as they are green, any two liter bottle. Now you can use you know, something that's not pressurized, right? So like, for easy example, like vitamin water bottles, right? <laughs> if you have a comparable two liter vitamin water bottle, those don't qualify to use as a pressure vessel because they are not pressure tested. So it has to be something that was pressurized like Coca-Cola and stuff, because I believe those bottles are pressure tested to go well above 75 PSI. So you're saying anything carbonated? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. OK, so just to be sure, the bottle that that the water goes in has to be green, but all the rest of the bottles can be clear. Yep. Is that right? That is correct. That's correct. OK, thank you. And let's say you want to put a vitamin water bottle on top of the pressure vessel let's say a Sprite bottle, right? That's okay because that's not a pressure vessel. So you can use anything else above. There is no, there is no restriction as far as being green or carbonated. Any other questions? All right. Then. Well, number one rule, let the kids be kids. We see it every year. Um, some years we've actually had to have uh, security people out there getting parents away because of uh, just constantly trying to take away from the kids. That's not something we want to do. We want to, um, a scenario that I want you guys just to remember is every year everybody tries to take pictures of their kids and we allow it, but there's always coaches and parents who want to use that as an opportunity to go out and coach their kids and do everything for them. So uh, we want, we again, it's all about the kids and we want to make sure that it's, that's what 
is the main thing is if a kid's got a crazy idea and you don't think it's going to be great, your job isn't to say, we're not going to do that. Your job is to explore every avenue to make that happen. And then if it doesn't work, talk to them how we can improve it and make it better and try to guide them. Right. Um, it's, we can all come up with something crazy. We can take it to our works. We might be engineers. We might have the technology. We can test it all out. Um, but at the end of the day, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We put a, we put a bottle through a uh, sunroof one year, about seven years ago and of a car that was parked where they probably should not have been parked at. And that was the talk of the day. Nobody was talking about anything else, but the fact that their bottle went through the sunroof and the kids thought it was the coolest thing. Did they have a successful launch by the score no but they also had that memory that they're gonna remember from being in science Olympiad with their friends when they broke somebody's car with their rocket so have fun with it let the kids have fun um and it'll be fun for you guys too because the kids will come up with some crazy stuff and some of it will work and that's the fun part so anything else manish nope i think that's it we've covered it all so so no earpieces then <laughs> a, that was a joke as far yes. as coaching our kids right yes yeah. no no earpieces have you and... found any parents with ear, earpieces remotely uh radio in their their techniques? we have not had that we have not had that <laughs> but uh we do have you know the parents that will after the first launch they'll call their kids over and try to be like sneaky like fixing things in between and thinking we're not watching oh we're watching and i take I will say I take pride in sending parents away because we do this meeting every year and we talk about let the kids have fun. And then when we get when we get to the event and we're not doing it, I will make sure that it happens um, because it's not uh, it's not about us. It's about them. So if they have to do repairs, how long in between launches are is there to do a repair? They get as long as they want. We will sit there forever. We had a team that had one rocket. Uh, this was a couple years ago, had one rocket. It went up, landed on the cement. The entire rocket broke. They sat there for four hours and built a brand new rocket from scratch, from their toolkit. They went, found a two liter inside the school. They came in third place. Hmm. So we will give them all the time that they need. However, they have to, uh, it's just them. So definitely bring a toolkit because you know, I've seen years where a nose cone breaks or something else fails and the kids have to remake their whole nose cone over to the side and it takes some time. So um, we give them as long as can it we possibly have, takes. Can we have spare parts like an extra parachute or an extra you, nose yep, cone? You can bring all that in your toolkit. And if something goes wrong, you could just swap it out. Um, we've seen teams, um, the big thing, like we talk about that two inch rule, um, teams that say you show up that day and the rocket doesn't fit and they have their toolkit, we've seen teams adjust their wings completely, take them all off, re-put them on, or um, you know, have scissors in there to cut pieces off to make it fit. So all of that is allowed, and we give them the time that they need. And I think those are the cool parts, is when you see something go wrong and the kids by themselves go fix it, um, they know exactly what to do. Um, and that is a sign of a, uh, that's the sign of a good uh, Water Bar Rockets coach, since you guys are all coaches, that those kids know exactly what to do and by themselves were able to fix it. So um, those are the, you definitely bring a toolkit because if something does go wrong, they do have every opportunity to work on their rocket. All right, thanks guys. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. All right, last call, anything else guys? Um, well, the links on the side here that are for, if I click on it, I'm not, is it supposed to be opening up another tab or web page? As when I click click on it, uh, it shows up as a link in my conversation. But when I click on it, I'm not seeing another. Not going to my browser. I guess I can just write it down. But or, it, it's the Macomb SO link. Yeah, the .org. Yeah. When you click on it in the conversation. It's so not. You, I think you have to you have to right click and copy the link. Okay. And then paste it into the browser. Got it. Got it. Or I can open link. Yeah, I see that now. Okay. Yep. Or open link, yes. Yep. Very good. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys. For, uh, thank you guys. Have a great uh, rest of your weekend.